it's Writing Wednesday, and I decided to talk today about starting a book. Uh, as you know, my manuscript, A Sudden Sun, is with the publisher now being edited, and I'm not quite into a new story yet, but thinking about one, kind of tossing around ideas. And one of the big questions is always, once I know what the story's about, which I don't quite yet, but I'm getting there, what do I actually write first? What's the first scene? What's the opening thing that's going to grab the reader? And as I see it from both things I've written and things I've read, there are three basic ways you can go with this. First off, there's the opening where you just jump right into the middle of the action. There's actually a technical literary term for this. Like a lot of literary terms, it's in Latin, I think. Greek? Latin? Anyway, and like a lot of words in dead languages, I have no idea how to pronounce it, but it's in medias res, and it means you don't do any setup, you just jump right into the story. This is it, Elmo. Yeah, we've been through a lot together. I know you've got your secrets and I've got mine too. But my patience has run out and I'm not putting up with this any longer. If you don't tell me what you know right now, Elmo, I'm going to... No, no, don't, don't! I am. I'm going to tickle you one more time. <laughs> so that's one way to do it. Another way, and I think perhaps one that we associate more with older fiction, but you do see it a lot in contemporary books too, is the slow setup, the exposition and description that sets the scene before we ever meet the characters or before any action ever happens. I still remember the Red House, that weathered clapboard building that sat behind its white fence atop the outcropping of rock. I remember it well because the Red House was in a painting that once sat over the blue couch with the multicolored cushions in the room that I remember so vividly. How well I remember the cushions on that couch. The doorway that showed beyond it a glimpse of hall with a tangle of salt encrusted boots. The vacuum cleaner hiding coyly behind the door as if to suggest that we never needed to vacuum, although we almost always did. The curtains, the other chairs that vaguely matched the couch, the well-stocked bookshelves with the family portraits atop, the beautiful but rather messy looking fireplace in which we often burned garbage, the entertainment center with the many DVDs we owned because we didn't have cable, a haunting glimpse of the dining room beyond, and ah yes, the couch. For it was on that couch that I first met Elmo. There's also, and I don't think there's a technical term for this, but there's what I like to call the flash forward, flash back, sometimes sort of called the frame story. Um, this is just thinking of things I've written. This is what I did at the beginning of That Forgetful Sure. In a way, it's kind of what I did at the beginning of By the Rivers of Brooklyn. And in books I've read lately, you know, I'm thinking with the ones I teach my students, it's how a separate piece starts with Gene Forrester returning to Devon school 15 years after he's graduated and remembering back the things that have happened to him. And it's the way To Kill a Mockingbird starts. When he was 13 years old, my brother Jem got his arm badly broken at the elbow. And the whole book is the story of how Jem got his arm broken. So that's another thing you can do. Start with something in the future of your story that's going to make readers wonder, how did we get here? I sat on the couch holding Elmo's body in my hands for the last time. I never thought it would end like this. We'd spent so many years together, been through so much, understood each other so well, I would have once said. But that was long ago. The laughter, the companionship, the arguments, and the tickling. Always the tickling. But it had to end here. On this day, on this couch, in this way, I had to ask myself, how did it happen? How did we come to this, Elmo? I guess there are other ways to start a story besides that, but those are the three that spring most easily to my mind. Jump right into the middle of an exciting action scene, start slowly with a panning camera to establish the scene, a lot of exposition, a lot of description, or start in the future of your storyline, let us know how it's going to end up, and then the suspense is all in telling us how we got there. I don't think there's any one way that's better than the other. I think it's a matter of finding what works for your story and what's going to draw in the reader that you want to attract to this particular story. As for me, 
Still really don't know where to start yet, but I'm hoping to get there soon.